was mostly not understood about rabies until the time of Louis Pasteur. And Louis Pasteur was a great thinker, inventor, and especially medical experimenter. He very much was the beginning of microbiology, and although maybe not the father of microbiology, had a huge impact. He was the first to understand and develop a vaccine for anthrax, and for foul cholera, and even for rabies. There was a time and an experience where he decided that rabies was the next thing he was going to tackle. And although he couldn't grow it in a petri dish like he could anthrax, he was able to transfer it and he was able to manipulate the virus in a way to make it more stable and make it more consistent so that instead of his patients and his unfortunate for them experimented on dogs to take months or weeks or days it was unknown when they would come down with rabies. He created a method of transfer of the virus and even a more virulent form of rabies, which in his case helped dramatically because it was able to standardize the production of rabies and the reproducibility of rabies. And then after this, he studied it and decided, or actually probably one of his technicians or one of his associates, and he took credit for it. But he would take the brain stem and actually the whole spinal cord of rabbits that had been infected with rabies, and he would put them in an air place to dry with no moisture. And he would leave them for different time periods and test how attenuated was the word that he came up with, or how virulent that virus was when it infected patients. And the more time it spent drying, the more attenuated it was, and therefore the less virulent. And he was starting to experiment with this in dogs when he would take a completely avirulent or one that had been proven to not cause an infection in, in dogs, and he would inject that into a dog. And then he would go to the next day or the next level of virulence and continue all the way up until it was a fully virulent rabies virus. And this seemed to stop in the tracks any spread of rabies once the patient had been vaccinated in such a manner. And during the time when he was studying this, and especially during the early days, just to give you an example of how feared this disease was, him and his two assistants that would restrain these dogs and collect saliva, collect brain material from these dogs would keep a loaded revolver, not just for the dog, but for each other. If one was exposed to this virus through a dog bite, it was agreed upon between them that the bravest of them would shoot the one that was exposed because they feared the virus and the possibility of the terror of that kind of a death more than they did for sure or a certain death. On July 6th, 1885, prior to having full confidence in his treatment protocol or vaccine protocol, the parents of Joseph Meister, a nine-year-old boy, brought him in order to receive his experimental rabies treatment. He was told by a doctor that that was his only hope. And although Louis Pasteur was not ready for human trials, they were able to convince him. And these were some of his most troubled days as an experimenter and as a scientist because he knew the boy was probably doomed to certain death if he did nothing. But one of the great parts of the Hippocratic Oath is do no harm. And what if he, instead of curing the boy, caused rabies in the boy? 13 injections over 10 days going from non-virulent spinal cord of the rabbit to being injected all the way up to fully virulent rabies virus. And the boy never developed rabies and was studied day after day, week after week, waiting for him to develop rabies, and he never did. The second patient in September of the same year, Jean-Baptiste Gepil, a 15-year-old boy who was also exposed to rabies, also received the same treatment. And again, he never developed rabies. He was confident enough to start to publish his findings and tell the world what he had found. 
Over the next 20 years, Pastor treated tens of thousands of people from many countries, many, not all, at his own facility, the Pasteur Institute, but many more places across the world, many in the U.S., many across Europe, and even into Russia. There were many places that developed these centers that would be able to give this treatment protocol. And although a few, there were failures, many of which were because the treatment was given too late or because it wasn't given with proper protocol, only an incomplete amount of vaccine was given, he still considered it a success and it should be considered a success even by today's standards. Because not only did it provide a chance for people with rabies, it also sparked one of the largest scientific revolutions in medicine that has ever happened. All because Louis Pasteur decided to treat one of the most feared diseases in humankind. And in America, this was started by two boys who had traveled all the way from Boston after being exposed to a rabid dog to the Louis Pasteur Institute in France. And the newspapers in America covered them in great, great detail, or followed every single day, published every single day what happened. And this sparked a belief that medicine could cure and a fascination with new medicine, a fascination with finding new things. So if you have not been exposed to a possible rabid animal, the method of getting a rabies vaccine is three vaccines in a row over a specific amount of days. So it's not a big deal. I personally have gotten it and all of my classmates in veterinary school got it. It's pretty easy, not a big deal. And no, there's no foot long needle that goes in the belly. However, if you are exposed to rabies, if you're exposed to a bat or a dog or any wild animal and think there's a chance that you were exposed to rabies, the vaccine protocol is much more stringent and much stronger. You're gonna receive a dose of immunoglobulin, which is supposed to bind the virus before, before your, body. your body creates an immune response to the virus. And then you will get four vaccines after that and be watched closely. And this is modern medicine here in the US and in Europe in places where there's money and potentially power. However, in places where there still is little money and little funding for these expensive vaccines that take cell cultures with labs that don't have the ability to do that, some of those countries are still using the old pasture protocol with a live rabies virus. So hopefully we can continue to develop new methods and cheaper methods to produce this vaccine so that those in the countries with the highest risk in Africa and in Asia can receive a good vaccine without the risk of being exposed to a live rabies virus. In the United States, the most common way that people are exposed to rabies is actually through the bat. The bat is elusive and the bat is scary for a lot of different reasons. However, one of the reasons is that many of the cases in the US that are rabies positive and do actually come down with the disease is a result of a bat bite that isn't even noticed because the teeth are so small and the bite is so insignificant. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have been exposed to a bat in the house or whether you think your pet has been exposed to a bat or a wild animal that maybe looks a little off, make sure you tell your doctor and then talk to your veterinarian if your pet was in the area as well because we will always rather si err on the side of caution with giving an extra vaccine to make sure that your pet doesn't come down with rabies and your doctor will likely do the same because the risk of rabies is not that high, but the terror and the trauma of being exposed to rabies is very, very high. There have been approximately six cases of people in the United States that have been, that have actually gone through rabies, tested positive for sure, and actually lived to tell the tale. But this is not normal, and almost none of them have gotten out without significant brain damage. And this is only using a specific protocol that's extremely high risk and untested. So just get the vaccine, get the post exposure prophylaxis because that is going to be so much easier, so much cheaper and so much better for you and your health than not doing it and coming down with rabies.
I just finished the book called Rabid by Bill Wasak and Monica Murphy. It's a fantastic read, and if you guys have time, I would highly suggest you read it if you have any interest in this subject. They go through a lot of history, a long period of history, and in a lot more depth than I can go through in this video. So I highly suggest it. I got a lot of my information from that book, but also a lot of information from several other sources with a link down in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you wouldn't mind, uh, hit the subscribe button as it will always help out the channel. And also then you get to see more content like this where we talk about diseases that affect human health, animal health, uh, and maybe some animal products. And in my next set of videos, we're gonna be talking about dogs and itching and why dogs itch and what are the top 10 causes of itchy dogs. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And